Bachrinder said you don't need a Part 107 to fly commercially as long as you're with one. That is true, Gideon FPV. Um, so the FAA defines, and Blunty, keep me honest about this. Make sure I get the details right because I know you, you're an expert on these details. FAA shit. There is the pilot in command, the PIC. And the pilot in command is the person who is sort of legally responsible for the flight. The pilot in command must have a 107 if you're doing a commercial operation. And then there is a another entity defined by the FAA called the person operating the controls, the POC. And the pilot in command and the person operating the controls, the, uh, the POC is the person who is holding the controller and physically flying the aircraft. The PIC and the, per, the POC can be the same person. When I fly a drone and I have a 107, I am the pilot in command and I am the person operating the controls. I am both of those things at once. However, they don't have to be. So if there's a person who wants to do a commercial flight and they don't have a 107, all they need is a person with a 107 to come stand next to them and go, I am the pilot in command for this flight. Go ahead, fly the flight. And if anything goes wrong, that PIC is going to be legally responsible. So, like, obviously, you know, you don't want to necessarily just do that without willy-nilly. But it is true that if you don't have a 107, all you need is anyone with a 107 to stand next to you and go, you're good, I'm your PIC, and then you're good to go. Um, and that's, and I would like to say, if anybody out there who doesn't have a 107 gets a call from the FAA, and the FAA says, sir... We believe you made these flights illegally. Those were commercial flights. You uploaded them to your YouTube channel. It was a live stream. You got ad revenue and you got super chats. And in addition, you were paid to do the flights by the car dealership. And you sold the footage afterwards. That was a 107 flight and you don't have a 107. You're in trouble. Well, if someone who was a 107 operator was standing there with you and that was your PIC for the flights then you're off the hook. As long as that person says, I was the PIC for that flight, I was physically co-located with him at the time, and, and I made sure that the flight was performed while the requirements were met. So. Bunty, did I get all that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the uh, for non-107 operators, the PIC can be a lot like... Hey, Bunty, here's a question that I've always had. And you're not a, you're not a lawyer. You're not a legal expert. But we'll sh let's shoot the shit about this question for like five minutes. In a court of law, you're innocent until proven guilty, and therefore, and, and you have a Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate yourself. So when the government says we think you broke the law, you can say prove it, and then you shut up. And if they don't prove it, you, you're off the hook. But when the FAA comes to you and says. I don't think you had a spotter for that flight. Let's say they did that. I don't think you had a spotter for that flight. I don't think you were uh, within visual line of sight for that flight. And you say, you can't say, well, I, th I did have a spotter. There, there was, it was standing right next to me. Well, who was it? I don't want to tell you. You prove I didn't have a spotter. Go ahead. And then they say, well, we're going to fine you and we're going to pull your 107, F you. Because it's not a criminal, it's a civil infraction. But it, it feels weird to me, Blunty, that the onus the, is on you to demonstrate to the FAA that you were compliant, whereas normally it's on the government to demonstrate that you were not compliant. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think it's just different when a government branch has a problem with you. I think they get the burden of proof. I think it's like part of the way the rules it's a, work. It's a, it's a regulatory thing, right? It's not yeah. a criminal thing. Yeah, when you fall under a regulatory code, which is civil, mm -hmm. uh, hearsay, hearsay is allowed in civil trials, I believe, is the reason. It's something like that. Maybe a lawyer on chat can correct me, but yeah. it's something like that. Uh, because hearsay can be used, then they have a consideration of a preponderance of evidence regardless of what they have. Yeah. And because that's the case, it is your burden of proof to disprove their claim. I, I believe that's how it works. Somebody can yeah. correct me. Yeah. 
Like, I, I, I go back and forth on the spot. Like, the 107 thing, either you had a 107 or you didn't. Either a person with a 107 is willing to go to the FAA and say, I was the PIC for that flight and put their butt on the line, or they're not, right? But with a spotter, like, theoretically, I could be at a park. I could get my, I could say to a person walking by, hey, you like drones? Do me a favor. Stand next to me. Uh, keep your eye on this drone. And if you see anything dangerous, I could brief them. And then they could be my spotter. And I could fly the drone. And then I could be like, well, thank you very much for spotting for me. I'll see you later. They could walk away. I could never see them again. Don't know their name. Don't know their phone number. And if the FAA comes and says, who was your spotter for that flight? I'd be like, I don't know. It's this dude. He was walking by. I briefed him. Didn't get his information. And at that point, are they going to be like, I don't believe you. Here, here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I think that the reason this has to be uh, us trying to figure this out, imagining it, is yeah. because... This will never be tested. Yeah, be fair. Because that's not what they violate people on. So I suspect that it may be more complicated than they just get the burden, or it just falls on you to figure it out. And if you can't prove anything, then who who cares? In a case like you're saying with a spotter who's a random person, because that's not required to be documented, right? They're just going to get you on something that requires documentation. Uh, and right. this will never come up. That, yeah, that's fair. my assumption. Fair. I also think about it with the registered drones. Like when I review a drone and I say this is the new iFlight Nazgul 6, then if I don't have an FAA registration for an iFlight Nazgul 6, right, then I, I could potentially be in trouble. But like I flew this tiny trainer and when, before I flew this tiny trainer, I was like, did I register the brand new tiny trainer that I bought from 533 three months ago? I know I registered the tiny trainer I built six months ago. Huh. And then I thought, well, can prove which tiny trainer I was flying that day, FAA. Good luck. And then I was like, or is it on me? I don't know. Um, uh, real quick, uh, we got a question here, which is, do I need a spotter at a FRIA conducting drone racing? Riz FPV, FRIA gets you out of the remote ID requirement. It doesn't get you out of any of the other requirements. So you do need a spotter according to the FAA. Uh, what you would typically have, like at all the drone races I've been at, there's ample people who aren't flying in this heat. And a lot of times you'll have the guy who's flying in the next heat stand next to the guy who's flying in this heat. And he is like officially the spotter for that heat. Sometimes they'll actually be a spotter and they'll be like, hey, you got a guy coming up on you or oh, the other guy's all crashed out. Take it easy. You know, and he'll actually give you helpful information. But technically you do need the spotter. 